Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. This is the third in my series of new videos called You Grew It, What to Do With It. In the past, I've talked about beets and carrots. Today, the topic is pumpkins and winter squash. I'm going to cover how we store them, the varieties we've grown, and then what to do with them, especially in time for the holidays. Let's start with how I store winter squash and pumpkins. And I always want to mention something very important so that these will store for a very long time. And that is the curing process. After you have harvested your winter squash or pumpkins, it's really important to put them somewhere that is warm, light, and protected from the weather for two weeks before you put them into your permanent storage location. And what happens is the skin toughens up and that means they'll last an incredibly long amount of time. So let me show you where we store our winter squash and pumpkins. So here we are down in our basement. Please excuse the mess, but it's a great storage area. You can see I've put them on the plant shelves from our back deck. The idea is to store them somewhere that is fairly dark and about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a basement, maybe put them on the floor of a closet. And notice how they're not touching. That way, if one did get moldy, it won't spread to the others. Here are some varieties of winter squash and pumpkins that I've grown successfully over the years, just in case you're looking for some recommendations. Acorn squash, autumn frost, burpees, butterbush, butternut, kusha, delicata, lakota, spaghetti squash, sweet dumpling, and sweet meat. I think my two current favorites are autumn frost and that butternut. New England pie pumpkin, a whopper that I think was an Atlantic giant, Casper, Rouge Viftatum, Spooky, and I would have to say that my tried and true favorite is New England pie pumpkins. Let's talk about what you can do with winter squash and pumpkins. And to be honest, you pretty much can use them interchangeably because they're very similar in flavor. The main thing that seems to be a difference is the thickness of the flesh. And it does vary quite a bit in the winter squash. But the winter squash and pumpkins are wonderful in all kinds of savory dishes such as stews and casseroles and soups. And of course, there's the sweet dishes such as pumpkin pie, pumpkin bread, pumpkin muffins, and so on. I wanted to remind you that on my website, which is susansinthegarden.com, there is a guides menu. And if you go down a bit, you'll notice one called preserving the harvest. This is one that has to do with all different kinds of storage methods or preservation methods, and it also has recipes. So if we go down to pumpkins, you'll notice there's a video, how to make a homegrown pumpkin pie. And I also have a blog post on the same topic that gives you step-by-step -step instructions. So that will be mighty helpful since Thanksgiving is almost here. Right under pumpkins, you can see winter squash, how to cook butternut squash video. So a different type of squash and a different method for cooking it. So I hope that you'll use this section because I tried to make it very useful and there's a whole lot of different types of crops in there. So what am I gonna show you how to do today? How to roast a winter squash and I have a little bit different method for it, and it is so delicious, and it's very simple. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use two similarly sized 
autumn frost winter squash, but you can use this recipe for other types of winter squash. Carefully knock off the stem first, and I use the back side of the knife blade to do this. There we go. Even more carefully, cut them in half vertically. Scoop out the seeds and the stringy pulp. And I like to use our heavy duty ice cream scoop for this because it works pretty well. Now you can see what they look like and how thick their flesh is. For baking them, I like to use my small jelly roll pan and then I line it with either foil or some parchment paper. Place them inside the pan. Brush the edge and the inner part of each squash half with some olive oil. Now you're going to roast these inverted with the cut side facing down. But here's the special part of this process. You're going to take an unpeeled garlic clove and put it underneath the inverted squash. Once these are finished roasting, you can easily sort of squirt out the good part of the garlic cloves at that point and serve it with the squash. So that's why you can put them in unpeeled at this stage. Put the squash into the oven and set the timer for 45 minutes. Okay, so they've been in the oven for 45 minutes. How do I know if they're done? Just carefully flip over one and take a fork and see how soft the flesh is. And that looks absolutely perfect. If you're cooking winter squash and they're still pretty firm, just go ahead and put them back in the oven for 15 minutes, check them again, and so on. What's really cool is we're going to serve this winter squash with salmon and roasted beets. So we grew the squash, the garlic, and the beets, and Bill caught the fish. And that's all there is to it. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? I hope you've been enjoying this series of videos. I'll be sure to put links to the previous two videos in the description for this one. And next week, I'm going to look at onions, shallots, and garlic. How to store them and how to use them. Stay tuned.